Welcome to this daily devotional today. As we continue our study in the life of Jesus, we have this very serious question that Jesus is going to level through a, the form of a parable. Are you willing to lay down your life in order to accomplish the mission of Jesus, which is to reach people with the gospel? Because if we are not, then what he's going to say is pretty hard, that we are liars and thieves. This is a tough passage, and we got a whole bunch of verses to go through because we're going to go through the whole parable, and then we're going to go through Jesus' explanation of that parable. So hang on tight, but before we get started, let's start with a word of prayer and a time of confession to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we lift up our sins and our failings to you now. Lord Jesus, in you we find the forgiveness of our sins because of your sacrifice on the cross. Though we pray that you would give us the, the heart and the eyes to see what you are showing us in your word today. Help us to have the courage and the strength to be your disciples, to follow you in this mission that you've called us to. Though we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're picking up in John chapter 10. It's this parable, verses 1 through essentially f uh, 5, but then we're going to see in verses 7 through 18, Jesus is going to explain it to his disciples because they didn't get it. Perhaps you'll be a little sharper than them and you'll pick up on it um, as we go here. Unfortunately, in this passage, we're going to be covering there's too much. There's too much to cover. So we're going to cover some of the things that are in this passage. I would encourage you to dig more into this, but I didn't want to break it up into multiple uh, days. So let's read through it. John chapter 10, starting in verse 1. This is Jesus speaking. Truly I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. So, Super simple, right? So, a shepherd um, is the true shepherd of the sheep, and the sheep don't follow strangers around. Okay. Jesus gave them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus said again, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf then snatches and scatters them. This happens because he is a hired hand and doesn't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. But I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down, 
and have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. So, generally speaking, we have this picture of the true shepherd who is Jesus, right? But then we have this contrast between Jesus and false teachers. So we're going to have a couple of conversations kind of going on simultaneously here. It's, it's like he's kind of layering the, uh, the, the pictures on top of each other. The first layer, so to speak, is, well, um, you should only follow Jesus because he's the only one who, you know, has salvation. He's the only shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus died in our place. Our sin, which deserved death, Jesus took that punishment upon himself. He is the true shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. But then we see this contrast to the false teachers or false prophets, false messiahs, or false religions, you could put it, um, where they don't, the point isn't to lay down their life for the sheep. They are there to kill, steal, and destroy. And how do we know that they are false? Is because they do not come in through Jesus, who is the gate. But also we have to kind of... So it's, it's who's the true sheep, but then also who is the true teacher, right? If you are a, a false sheep who has climbed in over the, uh, the fence without coming through Jesus, you're not really... Jesus is sheep. You're not saved. So we must go through the gate. And then also the teachers, the true teachers, the, 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 the people who serve God must go through Jesus. And we are to follow Jesus' example and lay down our life for the sheep. All right, so we're going to get into all those. I just threw a lot at you. Then there's a whole bunch in here that, uh, that we, we will just briefly touch as we uh, run past it, and you can dig into those a little more. Because we have the story, and then we have the explanation, I will try to give you kind of um, where the explanation kind of ties to the to the story, but uh, it's, it's a little complicated. Some of it's not one for one. Verse 1, though. Truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. This also corresponds to verses 7 through 9, where he explains that, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. So false teachers who climbed in elsewise. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So those who don't won't be saved. You see, so it's false teachers, but then also sheep. I, I kind of struggle with, kind of, um, as I was studying this passage, why would Jesus conflate being saved with being a proper teacher, right? But then, I mean, discipleship is what we're called to. And what we're called to is be on mission, co-mission, you know, co-with. We are with Jesus on mission to uh, bring the gospel to the ends of the earth and to all the people of the earth. So, really, we often separate the two, but, but, but they really aren't. To Jesus, being a disciple who lays down your life to see people saved is, is, is what it means to be saved, right? If you are saved, you will lay down your life to see other people saved, not might, not you could, or you ought to. No. If you are saved, you will lay down your life to see other people saved. Am I speaking too strongly here? <laughs> tell, me, tell me how Jesus is separating the two. If you do not, if you enter the gate, then you are saved. But you also um, are called to lay down your life for others. Jesus says, follow me. That's what it means to be a disciple. 
follow. And if we follow Jesus, we will do what Jesus does. Why does the Father love Jesus? He loves him because he lays down his life for the sheep. Okay? So, um, okay, so uh, I got ahead of myself. Verse 1, so Jesus is the gate. He is the true way of salvation, the one true way of salvation. So application is we need to believe that Jesus is the only way of salvation. You know, people may want to climb in a different way, but but they really are being selfish and seeking their own gain and not, not submitting themselves to Christ. And there is only way, one way, which is submitting themselves to Christ in faith. Uh, secondly, um, false prophets are not tied to or sent by Jesus, right? How do we know if someone's a false prophet or a false teacher? It's that... They climb in by another way. They don't come through Jesus. They don't. Um, they don't drip Jesus. <laughs> if you want to know if someone is is a right teacher of the Lord, is that all they want to talk about is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and his future return. And I mean, they just don't. They don't want to stop about Jesus. They they turn anywhere in this book and they, they want to talk about Jesus. They don't want to talk about stories. They don't want to tell you this cool thing that happened last week and go on for a whole sermon about uh, some morality lesson that they learned. They want to talk to you about Jesus. They want to read the words of Jesus. They want you to get in the words of Jesus yourself. They want to talk to Jesus in prayer. They want to talk about Jesus in any time they open their mouth. False prophets are not so. They want to talk about themselves. They want to talk about whatever their God is, which is usually themselves. Verses 2 and 3. It says that Jesus was sent by the Father who confirmed him, right? The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep, Jesus. Jesus enters through the proper. Um, the gatekeeper opens it for him. Who's the gatekeeper? The gatekeeper is the father who confirms Jesus is the shepherd. And the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So uh, Jesus is going to, um, he calls out his people, the people that are his, who are following him. If you're a disciple, you will follow Jesus. And if someone else is following Jesus, then you're willing to walk alongside them for a while. Let them be the under-shepherd. And Jesus is the shepherd, of course. Um, so application is, you know, the signs and wonders that uh, the Holy Spirit and the Father used to confirm that Jesus was sent by God. Uh, they prove that Jesus is who he said he was. He, he went through the gate. He didn't climb in some other way. He didn't fake stuff. He didn't tell everyone how awesome he was. No, he, he went through the gate and the gatekeeper, the Father, said, This is the one. This is the Messiah. The signs and the wonders all prove that. All right, verse 3 and 4. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. Uh, we already covered that, but this part. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So he knows his sheep, and he leads them. He doesn't chase them or doesn't drive them. He leads them. Verse 4. When he has brought all his own... Uh, Brought all his own outside. He goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. Uh, so here it just says that the shepherd goes ahead. And it's, it's a little vague there. But in the explanation passage, it gets much, much more in depth, right? Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd not just goes ahead, but lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, or the false prophet, uh, since he is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf then snatches and scatters them. 
This happens because he is a hired hand and doesn't care about the sheep. Okay, so um, you have a pastor at your church. <laughs> are they a hired hand? Or are they an under-shepherd under Jesus? Do they care about the sheep? If they do, they will lay down their life for the sheep. Now, when I say this, um, are you willing to lay down your life to see people saved? I'm going to ask this in two ways, two questions. Because oftentimes your mind has gone to one or, two, uh, or the other of these extremes. And I believe by asking it both ways, it reveals much more accurately. Are you willing to lay down your life by patiently, regularly serving, maybe in a menial, tire, tiresome task, in order to see people saved? Are you willing to, to serve in some podunk country church where, you know, nothing ever happens in order to see people saved if that's what God calls you to? Whether to be a pastor there or to be a farmer or whatever. To serve as a, as a deacon or, or, or a Sunday school teacher at this little church out in the middle of nowhere. So are you willing to lay down your life in patient, regular service? If you're, if you're like, yeah, I'll lay down my life for Jesus and to see people saved, and you're saying that out of pride, <laughs> so the question I just asked, are you willing through patient, regular service over the long haul and maybe in a place of, of obscurity, you're going to really chafe at that one. No, no, I'm willing to lay down my life, you know, to die in the jungle kind of thing. Okay, well, if you're driven by your own arrogance and your pride, the dying in the jungle thing you theoretically would say yes to, but growing old and uh, seeing very little fruit for your efforts, um, you may say no to. So let me ask the second question. Are you willing to go into the jungle and die there in order to reach people for the gospel if that's what God calls you to? Are you willing to leave it all? Are you willing to leave your home, your farm, your wherever, and go on mission? Now, I know there's a lot of preparedness people here, and you know, you've invested a lot possibly in, in building up your self-sufficiency and your home and everything like that. Um, are you willing to leave that? Leave the security. Go, um, you know, live like a prophet with nothing but your cloak and your staff in your hand and, and trust the Lord to provide for you like he did Elijah? Are you willing to do that? Because if you are full of worldliness and greed, then you won't be willing to do that. I, I say that when I talk to young people that are going into the ministry, pride is more of the issue, and they really are you know, send me into the jungle, you know. Uh, but I think that especially once people get a little older, have families, have a, uh, buy the house and the car, suddenly uh, worldliness and uh, become the rich young ruler then where you're not willing to give up everything for Jesus anymore, if you ever were. We cannot be his disciple if we are not, like him, ready to lay down our lives for the sheep. Um, you want to know how to get into leadership position in a church real fast? <laughs> I learned this over a few years. It's very, very easy, actually. You show up consistently a lot early and stay a little late, okay? And then you just find the leadership and ask them, what needs doing? Where can I serve? How can I help? And just keep asking them. If you do this, <laughs> and then when you get tasks, maybe not ones you would choose, but things that need to be done, and you just do them, pretty soon you're going to be seen as one of the leaders in a church. That's just how it goes. But see, most people don't do that. Most people show up at churches and they want to consume. They want to avoid any responsibility um, they want to generally avoid serving. And if they do serve, it's 
they want to serve in a specific role or capacity that they feel comfortable or um, they want to serve in the capacity they want to serve in. Very few people are willing to, you know, come into a church and kind of do a blank check, put me in coach wherever I'm needed. Like, that doesn't happen very often. It's really odd when someone does that. Because you know what that is? That shows that this person actually cares about the sheep and they're not just looking out for themselves. Lots of people will do a little bit for pride, a little bit for, you know, they'll be very stingy and want to give Jesus this much. Just this much. Not, not any more, Jesus. Just, just this much. This is yours. The rest is mine. Okay? I, I look in Scripture and, and I just, I struggle to see that kind of disciple. I struggle to see that type of, of calling from Jesus. But then I do see that Paul uh, says of Timothy that, um, that, that Timothy has a genuine concern for them. And he says, I don't have anyone else like him. Everyone else serves their own interests. So, I mean, nothing new under the sun. But is that, is that really following Jesus? Regular, patient service. And if God calls us in extraordinary moments. Other applications. So are you willing to lay down your life to see people saved? Is a question I want to leave you with. But, you know, we should seek to serve, not seek to consume. Right? Whether that's in a church, whether that's in our relationships. Jesus put us here on the earth for a reason, to serve others, not to be served. Um, we should recognize the sacrificial love as a mark of God's messengers, as the mark of God's messengers. So, so you want to pop somebody on and watch some sermon or some teaching from somebody? Well, are you discerning enough to go, well, does this person sacrificially serve or are they just getting wealthy off of the attention everyone's giving them? Lots of people use Jesus talk in order to become wealthy and powerful and have influence and feel like their life matters. But um, you should look for the people that genuinely serve uh, to their own loss and, and seek to speak the truth even when it's unpopular. Are they willing to cover the hard truths? Are they willing to... Um, are they just self-promoting or are they promoting Jesus? And we need to be discerning in who we listen to and who we follow. True shepherds, under shepherds, who lay down their life for their flock um, rather than wolves in sheep's clothing that, that uh, seek to get as much out of the sheep as they can. And... Finally, there we, we should love God, love Jesus for his sacrifice for us, of course. He laid down his life for us. That should inspire sacrificial love towards God and to his mission, which is loving these ugly people that um, uh, can be really horrible to each other and they can be really horrible to us. But do you love the people that Jesus loves? Because if you say you love Jesus, whom you cannot see, but you do not love your neighbor, whom you can see, you are a liar. That's what it says. So there's two other points that I want to tap on as we run past them. Verse 17, this is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I'm, that I may take it up again. Why does the Father love Jesus? Because he lays down his life for the sheep. Because he has that sacrificial love for us. Does God love you? Like, in a, does he approve of you? Does he um, delight in you? It's, uh, he delights in you if you lay down your life for others. Right? How do you want to please God? Well, how about you take a care and concern for others? <laughs> God likes it when you do that. Also, um, Jesus says that no one takes my life. No one took Jesus' life. Jesus laid down his life 
as a sacrifice. Um, no one took it from him. He laid down his life on the cross for us. So I'll leave you with that question. Are you willing to lay down your life? And what is before you is probably more of a patient, regular service. Are you willing to serve um, your family members for Christ's sake? Are you willing to serve your church for Christ's sake? Are you willing to serve in whatever ministry capacity God is leading you towards, where you may have to do a lot of long, hard work and, and lots of um, just unrecognized service? Be the Sunday school teacher in your church, if that's what's needed, or work in the nursery, or wherever it is, because you're being part of God's program to reach people with the gospel. Let us pray, and let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before you go to do all the things that God has called you to do today. Lord God, I pray that we would have this same heart in us as Jesus did, to lay down our lives for others. Not just stand in front of someone and catch a bullet kind of heroic thing that may appeal to our pride, but every day die to ourselves and put other people first to serve them, even when they don't say thank you, even when they don't recognize us, even when they don't even notice the things that we do for them, Lord. Help us to lay down our lives for the people you've put in our lives, whether it's the children, the spouses, the neighbors, the friends, the family members that you would have us to love patiently. Lord, help us to demonstrate that that sacrificial love of Jesus that will come out of us if we are true disciples of you. Lord, I pray that you bless each person who's watching this video today, that they would find you in the ordinary things and walk behind you as you lead us all. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. If you have time to watch some other Bible study videos, you can check out the playlists here and here. Otherwise, I will see you guys again tomorrow, every day, every weekday, here at 6 a.m. and uh, Sundays at 6 a.m. God bless you all.